Hello and welcome back to my hand modeling tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to lay out the UVs that are used to uh, texture map our hand. Now, right now if you look at our hand we have this uh, default uh, purple texture, which is kind of nice but it's kind of blocky. It'd be nice if we had some detail in there, the kind of detail you can get from a texture map, uh, so that we could get uh, the, the subtle hues uh, and of uh, the skin color as it goes over the hand and things like uh, the nails and the knuckles and uh, things like that. Now in order to do that we need to be able to put a, a texture on the hand and in order to do that that means that every single one of these polygons has to be mapped to a place in the texture map, uh, has to be mapped to its own place in the texture map so it has its own little bit of texture uh, color data that it's reading from there. I'm going to open up the UV editor, which shows you what the current layout uh, of the UVs are. And where is it? UV texture editor. And this is going to show you uh, exactly what the UVs look like in their current state. Now remember, when we were modeling this, we modeled each and every one of these parts from a uh, cube. So the UVs that were present in the cube when the cube was created got carried over. So um, they're all overlapping right now because let me just click off of that and click on to a brand new cube. See when Maya creates a new cube it will automatically lay out your uh, texture coordinates for you right there. And this is great if you want to texture map a cube. But when you have one, two, three, four, five, six different cubes that were created all on top of each other, let me just uh, delete that, go back to the hand all of those different UVs were laid one on top of another, which means all of these polygons are drawing from the same part of the texture map. On top of that, it's probably a little bit distorted because those UVs were originally created to a texture, a cube, not a hand. Uh, so to give you a, a better visual idea of what's going on here, I'm uh, going to uh, create a new material, a Lambert material, and I uh, created a texture map that we're going to use just to give you a better idea of what it looks like when you put a texture on the sand. This isn't going to be the final texture we're using, this is just sort of an example to give you a better idea of how the UVs are laid out. And uh, this is the fire duck. I'm going to open up that and bring that on the screen. And middle click and drag. And there you can see that's what happens when you put the texture of the fire duck as is on the hand. And see so we've got a lot of repeats here because this finger, that finger, the base of the hand, the thumb, they're all drawing from the same set of UVs uh, on, oh, let's look that, on the uh, texture. In fact, let's uh, turn the texture back on and you can see that uh, this part of the duck here, the feet, that corresponds to that square right there. That's where uh, that data is being drawn from. And if you look over here uh, at the very tips of the fingers, that very small area is, I think it's drawing from right about there. So you can see that we're going to have to move these UVs around so that we have a much better layout. Now uh, one way to do that is to project a plane onto our hand. Our hand is mostly flat, so if we could lay out the UVs the same way that we would lay them out on a plane, uh, for a plane that fits perfectly flat along our hand, that would help us out. Well, we can do that by going up here and selecting um, Create UVs Planar Mapping. And Maya is going to create a tool that helps us to lay out the tools on the plane. Unfortunately, by default, it lays them out on this plane here, this uh, uh, the X plane, which is not what we want. Our hand is facing down the Z axis, so we want that plane to be facing down the Z. So we're going to go over here where it says rotate Y90 and change that to zero. And see that uh, tool just flipped around 90 degrees and now it's pointing down the Z axis. And if we go over here and we zoom out, you can sort of see a very stretched out, our UVs are sort of stretched out there on the Z axis. Now what we're going to do is, in order to make this more useful is use that tool to push that out a little bit. So you can see that uh, the texture is now being projected onto this plane. And when we actually move that out, it actually changed the UVs in our texture editor over here too. So we can see that's a whole lot more reasonable. 
And uh, this is actually starting to look good. This is starting to look like each and every polygon has its own little spot in the original texture that uh, the data is coming from. There's one problem though, and that is that the polygons on the back are drawing exactly the same data as the polygons from the front. And uh, actually, I uh, see this thing in the background. I can get rid of that just by clicking on the V here to make that invisible because we're not using that guide anymore. That was just earlier when we we're doing the modeling. We're doing the UVs now. So uh, back on topic, uh, here is our hand. And uh, see, the back of the hand is drawing data from a different section, from the same section of the map that the front is. We'd like this to be two different sections. So what we're going to do is go into edge mode. And we're going to cut this hand in half. At least we're going to cut the UVs in half. So we're going to uh, start off by double clicking on that line there. And you see that selected all of those edges in a row, all the way up to where it hits our first break here. So what I'm going to do is hit the shift key and double click on that edge to add the rest of the loop. And that's going to continue until we hit the very top here. It's going to press shift, double click. It's going to continue the loop. And, uh, whoops, zoom in. And, uh, shift, double click, continue the loop. And when you double click, what that does is it selects all edges in a row until it hits a, a break here. Let's say we have a break that splits into one, two, three, uh, to six here. Uh, when it hits a, a six break, Maya doesn't know what to do. But when you have these ordinary four breaks, um, it, it just keeps on going right through. Now here we had a three break. I'm going to press shift, double click, and that's going to keep on going. So whenever you do that, it's going to select all the... Oh, I selected the wrong thing there. Shift. It's going to select all the edges in a row until it hits the next point where it doesn't know what to do. So we're just going to have to follow along, keep on double clicking to add these edges, shift double clicking, and until we have the entire loop that we want. And we're almost done. Just down to the bottom here. Okay, now uh, we just selected that loop all the way around the uh, front of the hand there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use that line to cut front UVs from the back UVs. I'm going to do that by going into the texture editor over here and go to Polygons, uh, Cut UV Edges. Now, it doesn't look like anything's happened, but um, what it's done is it's taken those front UVs and separated it from the uh, back UVs, so now we can move them separately. So I'm, in order to make that a little bit more obvious, I'm going to right click here and go into UV mode, and I'm just going to pick a random UV inside the hand, and right click, go down to select, select a shell, mm -hmm. and that is going to select all the UVs that are connected to that UV. And see what it did here is uh, we started with that UV in the finger there, then it selected all the UVs that were on the front side of that cutout and none of the ones on the back side. So now that we have all those selected in the UV editor, we can press the W key. And it's a little bit hard to see. I'm going to turn off the duck so that it's easier to see the UVs. And I'm just going to select and drag that. And you can see that the, uh, the, the front UVs are still there in the front. And drag. And they're there. And these ones that we left behind are all the UVs on the back. So now the uh, two UVs are drawn from different parts of the duck. Now uh, one thing you might notice when we move these UVs, UVs over, uh, they are still sampling the duck image. Uh, what if you can imagine um, this texture repeats. So even though it isn't being shown here, there is sort of a, a second duck over here. So eventually we're going to move this back onto the texture map so they're all drawing from the same place, but uh, in just in case you're wondering where uh, that second duck was coming from, it's just this one repeated over here. Anyhow, uh, if we look back here, see these, these are all the back UVs, and that's good, but if you look down at the bottom here, you see how that's sort of smeared? Uh, that's because uh, we have those two UVs 
right on top of each other. So rather than this polygon, actually if I go into face, if I select that, you can see that face right there. If I select that one, that face is edge on. So that's not getting very much data from the texture map at all. So what we want to do is relax these UVs uh, so that um, uh, each and every one of these faces has its own chunk of the texture map. So we're going to do that by going to Polygons, uh, Relax, and that's looking a little bit better if we zoom in a little bit and make that a little bit bigger. You can see that what that did is that moved the uh, edge UVs out a little bit so that, um, that they're not on top of each other anymore. Uh, it's not perfect. You can see that uh, it uh, sort of dips in a little bit over here. That's going to cause some texturing problems. Let me uh, turn off the duck again. Uh, so what we're going to do is go in and manu manually edit that so that these uh, UVs aren't overlapping. So I'm going to click there, bring that out. And this is trial and error. The, the automatic tools are nice, but they can't do everything. So uh, very often you're going to gonna have to go in and manually put these UVs in the right place. But um, the default that we got is, is reasonable, and it's a good starting point. It's going to go in and bring that out. And see, yeah, when I brought that out, all of a sudden, because that has a nice it has its own areas drawing from, it now looks a lot, makes a lot more sense when you look at it in the viewport there. So let's just bring that guy out here. And I don't know, you might want to relax them again, but I think that's reasonable because each polygon has its own reasonable chunk of the uh, texture map it is now drawing from. Okay. Now the the duck back on. Now the next thing you want to do, or the last thing you want to do, is put these two UV sets on the same texture map because this little square here, this represents the entire texture map. It's not going to do you any good to have your extra UVs out here on what is essentially the repeat of the texture map. So let us, whoops, I'm going to select all the UVs. And I'm going to press the uh, scale key, bring those in, and W key, and let's shift those over. And actually, let, let's not scale those. I'm going to undo that. And I'm going to rotate them instead. I'm press the E key for rotate. And I'm going to press the uh, R key for scale. I'm going to shrink that down a little bit. map. And for this hand, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press R, scale it down a little bit, press E to rotate, and move that over here. And let's turn off the duck because it's getting a little confusing. Okay. And actually, let's put that over there so we have a little bit more room. Bring that one up. And there, and what we have here is a nice, good usage of the texture map. Now, you're not there. There are very few times where you'll be able to use the entire texture map. I'm going to do a control shift to get those. Scale that up a little bit. Uh, there are a few times when you're going to be able to use the entire texture map. Uh, so the, these areas over here, these blank areas, are going to be waste space. However, the UVs that are on the texture map uh, are going to use a good chunk of it and are all nice and evenly spaced so it's going to be uh, a lot easier to uh, texture our model uh, using that. Okay. And that looks good. And uh, if we look at our hand here you can see it, it doesn't make a lot of sense but you can see each polygon has its own little chunk of the texture map and this is set up just exactly the way we want it for when we uh, come back in the next tutorial and start painting a texture onto our uh, hand.